Welcome to the next episode of Waterpark Rangers Let's Play Pikmin. In the last episode, you might remember that we got all three Pikmin colors in this game now, and that has opened a new option called Challenge Mode. Now, we're not going to do Challenge Mode, but I thought I'd just show you that it's on the, the screen, and I will just explain exactly what Challenge Mode does a little bit later. For now, let's go back to, you know, the normal progression of our file. When we last left off, we had finished getting five parts in the Forest Naval, so today we're going back to the Impact Site to gather a few more Pikmin, and we're going to get the other ship part, which is hidden in this area. Now, to get this uh, other ship part, you do need all three colors of Pikmin. You can't just get it on day one, because there are a few obstacles that red Pikmin just can't get past. And speaking of other colors, we need to increase the numbers of our blues. So, let's take out all the blues we've got now, because there is an enemy around here that gives a ton of Pikmin um, if you defeat it and bring it back to the onion. And we will need a couple yellows also, because we have a bombable wall in the way. Uh, one of those metal, iron, or stone walls. I'm not sure exactly what they are. Olimar says they're rock, but if you listen to the sound that Pikmin make when they attack them, they sound like they're tin or something. Alright, so now that we have our blues up here, we'll just keep them there for now. And pick up some of these bombs. The bombs are always found on this side of the cardboard box. Now, I know there's a weird beetle that just popped up. That's an iridescent flint beetle. Uh, we're not going to mess with it right now, just because I have no reason to. Let's focus on getting uh, our blues numbers up first. And that should be enough to take care of that. Now, back there we have a few enemies that are only found in this area. And they're not... They're also only found in uh, this first game. They're not in Pikmin 2. They're called Pearly Clam Clamps. Now, essentially, they're clams. And as you can see, they have a pearl in the center. Now, what you do is throw the Pikmin to attack it, but call them back after they hit it because a clam will clamp down, as the name implies. And any Pikmin that are stuck underneath that clam when the, the clam's mouth shuts will be eaten by it. So you have to be very careful about when you call them out. Okay, we're doing pretty well so far. So yeah, it just takes patience, and rapid throwing is a good technique to have as well. Whoa, get out of the mouth! Whoa, that was way too close! <laughs> Alright, I guess I should mention that depending on how your, uh, your squad is swarmed, uh, the Pikmin might still be standing in the mouth unless you direct them out of it. And another thing, after you've defeated a Clam Clamp, um, do not rest easy after the Pearl's knocked out of its mouth. As you might have noticed there, the Clam Clamp will still be able to eat even if the Pearl isn't inside, so make sure to call your Pikmin out of it and make sure they're safe. Now that we're bringing the Pearl back, uh, there are a couple things that we should also be able to set up because I'm intending to generally um, increase the numbers of Pikmin today because Impact Site is... Without a doubt, the best uh, place in the game to grow Pikmin in. So, I'm guessing that for the second half of this episode is going to be devoted probably just entirely to growing Pikmin. Um, but for now, we need to open up a couple things that will help us increase those numbers. Starting off, we have this little hidden jump geyser over here that Pikmin need to break open. You saw one of those back in the forest navel that I accidentally stepped on. Now that that's taken care of, we have another one of those uh, bundles of sticks in the corner that the Pikmin need to... Um, make a giant climbing pole out of. However, they managed to do that. Quality craftsmanship, I'm sure. And now that the pearl is in there, look at how many Pikmin it gives us. It gives you 50 individual seeds. That's a lot of Pikmin. That's pretty amazing. And now, as you can see, oh, okay, I guess I can carry that blue pellet back. Now, now, don't attack the other one. Come here. Get them all to climb up and have all of our use of jump geyser to climb up that really steep ledge right there that he can't just uh, run up. And now we can focus on getting this nice big uh, blue pellet back. It's best to get things color-coded when you can. You don't have to want, uh, worry too much about that with the pellet posies. Oh boy, here we go. We have to pull 50 of these Pikmin, and then, well, 60 if we're going to count that 10 that we're also going to have to pull. I guess this is a good time for me to explain challenge mode that I kind of just glazed over. Now, challenge mode. Challenge mode means something different in the second game than it does in the first. So, for starters, um, it's completely optional. It's just like a fun extra mode that they have in the game. And in it, there are no ship parts, and you only have one day. Now, I know that sounds completely crazy, but it's because the goal is different too. Depending on the area that you've selected, um, there will be different um, challenges that are mixed around. I'm doing a horrible job of explaining this, essentially. But the idea is, basically, grow as many Pikmin as you can in a day. You start off with, like, I guess five five of each type of Pikmin or something like that, and then you have to go around the area 
growing as many Pikmin as you can before the day is done. Um, so it's a very basic premise, but it can be a lot of fun if you're really going to try and do well in it. So the basic gist of challenge mode is that it's essentially what I explained. And they're the five areas that you can find in this game. Spoilers are five areas. Only they're slightly different because they've been uh, fitted basically so that they can be explored in a day. And while that might sound like they're not nearly as complex, in some cases they're a little bit more dangerous because there will be a lot more enemies and stuff loaded into them. And they're absolutely chock full of pellets and stuff. Essentially everything you need to grow Pikmin. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I might actually do a, a brief segment in this game where we go and uh, have a look at some of the different um, challenge mode areas. But until then, let's just get back to the matter at hand, which is, first off, moving this giant 20 Pikmin pellet. And we're probably going to want to call just a couple Pikmin off so that we can um, help carry the next thing here. Now, you might notice something weird about that clam clap. There is something strange inside the pearl. What? How could I possibly miss every single shot? Okay, here we go. So, it's no different from any other clam clamp. Uh, it just looks slightly different because that's actually a ship part in the center. And we did a ton of damage to it right there. Let's just work on breaking that out right there. Okay, there's just a sliver left. And call them out safely as usual. A little bit dangerous. Get out of there! I don't care about the positron generator! I'll read those brief notes about it instead. Positron generator. This electric generator is so powerful that if you approach it carelessly, you'll get an electric shock. Now, the funny thing about this part is I remember the first time I found it and I read that uh, description. I immediately was really worried that all my Pikmin would die because I thought that they would get electrocuted when it fell in the water. And no, electricity is not a hazard in this game. It is in the second, though I have promised not to really mention the second that much. I should mention at least that challenge mode in the second is different than the first. But that's for an entirely different reason. It's because the gameplay in the second is much different than the first. I know it sounds crazy, Pikmin 2's gameplay is very much different from Pikmin 1. And now we should probably increase just a, a little bit of our yellows. Once again, you don't need that many, but I'm going to get them uh, set on climbing this stick so they can get to their 10 yellow pellet. Okay, they're all climbing up. Oh yeah, remember when I said that whenever we got 100 Pikmin in the field, all of them would say this thing again? Well, he's saying it again, even though we've said it, he said it before. Wait, those three Pikmin aren't climbing it. This is some kind of glitch. I've never seen this glitch before. This is unacceptable. There we go. Thank you for climbing. And now we can work on getting that 10 pellet. Though we are running just a tiny bit low on time, so once we get the Positron Jenner back, uh, we'll call it quits for this uh, generator. Genitor. This is not Motor 3. Um, we will call it quits for this episode. And it should be arriving any minute now. Any second now. There it is. And, uh, it's not one of those parts that you actually get to see up here inside or on the ship. Yeah, so apparently I remember reading another note where Olimar says he uses this to cook noodles. Random thing. Yay, we have a giant egg beater on our ship. Well, that's another step towards completion. See you next episode.